Revision is not easy. Generally, revision is not fun. You put quite a lot of time aside to do it and you need to make absolutely sure that time is not wasted. The best way of ensuring your time isn't wasted is to use methods of revision that we know work. And I'm not talking about just looking at one piece of research. I'm talking about large summaries of all recent research. And we're going to use the insights from those studies to guide you in really practical ways into methods of revision that are going to work. I'm going to make just three suggestions about revision. One is about how you go about organising revision. One is about how you actually do the revision. And the final one is about how you find out how you're getting on and you identify the gaps in your knowledge. Let's start with your overall approach to revision. Should you learn a topic in one sustained long session or should you break that topic up into chunks, do it in shorter sessions and keep going back to them? Professor Dunlosky's uh, meta-study has a very clear conclusion. Where experiments are done, where one group learns things in one long effort and others do it in shorter bursts, the second group, the one who did it in shorter bursts, learn more every time. So, what's the message for you? The message is, if you've got a topic to learn and you've got a day to revise, Break that topic up with maybe other subjects or other topics and keep going back to it. Maybe at the beginning of the day and the end of the day or one day and then back the next day. That approach works, Dunlosky thinks, because your brain has to retrieve stuff very actively after a gap. That means your brain works harder to get the information back, which means the information is more likely to be retained in your long-term memory and therefore more likely to be used in an exam. So don't just keep going at one subject for an entire day or one topic for an entire day. It's very much a slog and it's not going to be very effective. My second piece of advice is about how you actually go about revising. And this is based on a meta-study by Marzano. And what Marzano does is to say that these particular approaches to revision are going to be worth maybe up to the equivalent of two GCSE grades if you can do them. These methods are what I might call active learning. That means they are not re-reading, they are not highlighting, because those methods don't really involve you actively in learning things. Active learning types of revision would include making flashcards, creating mind maps, making tables maybe of advantages and disadvantages or causes and effects, and maybe if you're revising English, a character analysis. These methods involve you thinking while you're revising and again that's going more likely to get the, the material into your long-term memory. So you could make flashcards. The making of flashcards, say, with a question on one side and an answer on the other, makes you think about the notes you're looking at to make those flashcards from. It makes you decide what's the most important information and what information links with what other information. The same with making a mind map. That makes you think how a topic is broken down. It makes you see the big picture and how that big picture is made up of smaller elements which link together. So these methods, which I call active, are the ones which you're likely to retain the knowledge from, rather than just highlighting, which is much more likely to give you a whole lot of bitty information that is not necessarily secure in your long-term memory. My final point is a simple one. Test yourself. Test yourself regularly, test yourself often, and test yourself truthfully. That is, make sure you don't look up answers as you're going along and kid yourself that you know something when you don't. That's because you really do want to find out what you know and what you don't know. And once you've done that, then you can focus more on the things you don't know and in that way fill in gaps in your knowledge. Now it's not just me saying this, over a hundred experimental pieces of research over ten years have reached exactly this conclusion. So testing must be a part of everybody's revision. It seems to work 
whatever method of testing you use, even the method of testing isn't exactly the same as the way exam questions are put. So it could be multi-choice um, questions, it could be just looking at question and answer flashcards, it really doesn't matter, it's the act of testing that is really important. So why is testing so effective? It, it seems there are two reasons for this. The first one is that when you're asking yourself questions in your memory, your memory tries to find the answers to that. In retrieving the answer, it also finds related information, which means that your mind begins to link information together. So therefore, you begin to put a subject together, not just the information you're looking for. The second reason it works is because once you've done the testing, You've seen what you know and what you don't know, and you're able to focus a bit more on studying on the things you don't know. So those are the two reasons why testing works and why testing should be a part of pretty much every revision regime. So how can you put these three pieces of advice together? Well, let's imagine you have an important topic to learn. Uh, let's say you organise five half-hour sessions for this, over a period of a week maybe. So you're leaving gaps between the sessions. In the first session you make notes on the topic, maybe from your textbook, maybe from your class notes. In the second session you make flashcards based on your notes. In the third session you can test yourself using those flashcards, begin to find what you do and don't know. That means in the fourth session, you can actually practice an exam question or a pass question, a practice question of some sort, look at the mark scheme, they're on exam board websites, and sort of mark yourself. That means the fifth session is then available for you to identify what you do, what you don't know, fill in those gaps, and be in a good position to move forward. But of course what you must remember is those five sessions aren't the end of revising that topic. The idea of spaced repetition is that you have to go back to it at some point and check it again. But that gives you a rough idea of three methods that we know work through research. Now, I wish you all the best of luck in your revision, but if you use those methods, it's not going to be a matter of luck.